So, let's go back to that question. You asked me a good question a second ago that will be important uh, in solving problems. What about if we have a plane mirror? What's the focal length for a plane mirror? Let's work that out step by step. When you're ready, what's the R for a plane, for a plane mirror? Infinity. Because it's infinitely flat. Well then, based on this equation, what would F be? Infinitely big. Yeah, so F would be infinity too. I don't know how much practice you have with working with algebra with infinities. But if the left-hand side is infinitely big, so there has to be something on the right-hand side that's infinitely big. Otherwise, the, the two sides couldn't really be equal. Uh, a mathematician might not say this is totally, uh, totally kosher, but uh, this is good enough for working with optics over here. We can say that f is infinity over here. If you really wanted to go gung ho on the algebra, you would say f is infinity divided by 2. That's still infinity. OK. Anyway, so we're getting here that f is also infinite. We would have expected that from the beginning anyway, because we just saw that f is also a measure of flatness. Well, this is infinitely flat, so all the measures of flatness should be infinitely big. This is actually important because in a second we're going to do some problems on plane mirrors. And when you do a problem on plane mirrors, what are you going to plug in for f for a plane mirror? Infinity. Okay, good. Um, so when you're working with a plane mirror, we have to plug in infinity over here for f. You might even want to make a note then that for a plane mirror, f is infinite. Although, if you forgot that, you should be able to figure it out from the logic that we just went through. Okay. All right. Up here we said, for converging devices, f is positive, and for diverging devices, f is negative. Well, something flat isn't really converging or diverging, so that's a new case. For something flat, f is infinity or something flat as infinity. And we're actually going to have to work a little bit more now with the algebra of infinity. Because we just said that for a plane mirror, we would be plugging in infinity over here for f. But I don't know. I, like I said, I don't have much experience to have with this. What is 1 divided by infinity? What would be a reasonable way to simplify that? 0. OK, good. Yeah, that's right. Um, because we know the bigger the denominator is, the smaller the fraction. Well, this is an infinitely big denominator, so the fraction should be 0. All right, so it looks like you are familiar with that. But as a problem-solving technique, one problem-solving technique we'll be needing is that 1 over infinity is 0. We can treat 1 over infinity as 0 as a problem-solving technique. And we're going to have to do that anytime we're working with a plane mirror. Right.
So we can have I'm getting a little bit confused by the sign. Okay. Now it's good that you're focusing on that sign. We definitely don't want to disregard the signs. So it's always good to use a question mark to indicate what the question was asking. What, what, what's the symbol that we think the question is really asking us for here? The um, image distance? Right. Now your textbook used this symbol for the image distance. On the board, I'm just going to write I for that. But anyway, you can use whatever symbol you want. So they're asking us for I, the image distance. And it's good that you made this uh, diagram here. And you plugged in this distance. That's good. Although, actually, yeah, it's better to put that up there, because that's not the height. Yeah. It's the object distance. Let's actually label this as the object. I didn't do that either. It's always good to actually label where our object is. OK. All right. All right, and now what did you plug in for O? All right, yeah. And it would be a good idea to actually write down that positive sign, just to force ourselves to always think about the sign, even though we know that for a single lens or mirror, the object distance is always positive. But this way, we're forcing ourselves to think about the signs. All right, and then he did uh, some algebra. So we've got here zero equals one. So you did 1 divided by 2.5, and you got 0.4. And then you had to move this to the other side. So when you moved this to the other side, it became negative. So that was good. Uh, everything that you did here was fine. So it's good that you saw this was a negative so far. And now we saw that we can use the trick now of taking the reciprocal of both sides. So we take the reciprocal of both sides. Remember, you can't do that in this step. You can't take the reciprocal of both sides until there's only one fraction on each side. And then when you did your calculations, you got that i was negative 2.5 meters. OK. Uh, and then we were kind of puzzling, what does this sign mean over here? Uh, Will you tell me, what does a negative image distance mean? Uh, negative image distance. <laughs> means that it's a, it's a virtual image. Yeah, a negative image distance means a virtual image. Good. So we know this must be a virtual image. What does that mean in this context? Do you remember what was our basic definition of a virtual image? It's where the, um, the trace facts meet. On the, it's on the uh, same side, or it's on the opposite side of the outgoing light. Yeah, the most useful definition here is that a virtual image is on the opposite side to the outgoing light. That was one of our definitions from the handout. A virtual image is on the opposite side to the outgoing light. Well, where is the outgoing light in this problem, on the left or the right? Um, the outgoing light is going to be on the left. Yeah, because you can't get behind a mirror, right? The light comes in from the left, and it also goes out on the left. It's going to both come in and go out on the left, because this is a mirror. This is the back side. Maybe we should have done this little trick to show this is the back side of the mirror. So here's the outgoing light. So which side will the image be on? The same side. Now remember, this is a virtual image. I'm sorry, it's going to be on the, uh, the opposite side. It's going to be as though it's behind the mirror. That it'll be on the right side. So the image will be somewhere over here. Now let's just ask if that's right. Now this is something we have lots of everyday experience with. This is a bathroom mirror. Well, if you look at yourself in the mirror, does it seem like your image is in front of the mirror or behind the mirror? It seems like it's in front of the mirror. Or behind the mirror, excuse me, when you're looking at it. Yeah, doesn't it seem like, it almost seems like there's your twin who's behind the window, right? When you're looking uh, through a mirror, um, if, you, if, uh, if you'd never heard of a mirror before, you would think that your identical twin was standing behind the window. You wouldn't think they were standing in front of the window. You'd think they're behind. All right, so actually this negative sign makes very good sense. Um, this negative sign makes very good sense because we know that plane mirrors do make virtual images. We look in a plane mirror every day in the bathroom and we know that the image uh, is behind uh, the mirror, not in front of it. So it's always important to, to think about what these signs mean. All right, uh, and what we just did would always hold 
plane mirrors always make virtual images. Uh, the, the logic we went through would hold in any case. You could always work that through for any particular case. Uh, and you could always end up with a negative sign over here. You can see why that is just by looking at our equation. We know that a plane mirror always has an infinite focal length, so we'll always get a zero on the left-hand side of this equation. Well, how can these two terms add up to zero? We know the object distance is always positive. Well, if O is positive, this must be negative, and that's a virtual image. 